This week, we're back with more information on the tech world and daily DIY hacks to make your life easier. For our Tech Quest segment, learn how to safely move all your tech equipment from one house to another while moving houses. In our Ask Rescue segment, learn how to store data wirelessly. For our Top 5 segment, know what are the top 5 accessories for your laptop. In our What Works For You segment, our team of experts help a customer transfer files from their tablet to their computer wirelessly. In the Easy Hacks segment, learn how to record your iPhone screen activity as a video on a MacBook. In the Before You Buy segment, know what to consider before buying an inverter. In the Tips and Tricks segment, learn how to carry out maintenance on a split air conditioner. Hi, this is Shivam. And this is RC. And this is Go Digital. And we are back to address your everyday technical issues, offer you tips and tricks, answer all your queries, and update you about the latest in the tech world. So let's see who needs our help today. Hi, I'm Arishi. Hi, Shivam. RC. So I've just moved houses and I need someone to help me move my equipments from one house to the other. Um, can you help me with that? Of course, our rescue team can actually come to your house and help you move that stuff. Alright, so that sounds perfect. Great. Could you please share your address with us? Yes, sir. After having taken stock of the job at hand, the rescue experts are ready with their gears and good to go. Hopefully, we'll be able to help them out. Hi Arti, good to meet you. I was expecting to see you guys. Please come inside. So these are the appliances in the house. Yes. That's the fridge. That's the TV there. And then there's the washing machine inside. Yeah. So I guess I mean I leave you guys over this and pack it and hopefully everything moves safely and sure. Moving houses can be a hectic experience. Similarly, moving all your tech equipment in a manner that makes sure nothing goes awry and everything stays in place is a tough but manageable task. The first step to do this would be to run a performance check on all the gadgets to make sure they're working before you start packing them up. Allocate a budget for your move. Consider accounting for both pre and post moving costs. It helps move along the rest of the relocation process. The cost of moving would depend on a lot of factors like distance, volume and weight of the goods. Prepare a list of all the equipment and its accessories that you are packing up and relocating. Get enough packing and buffering material like bubble wrap, cardboard boxes, styrofoam peanuts and scotch tape to ensure that you seal your equipment to make sure it doesn't get damaged in the moving process. To cushion fragile items, you can use towels, old curtains etc. while wrapping. Dry your refrigerator and washing machines before moving because moisture can cause damage to electronic goods. Dismantle your equipment and pack parts separately. Fit shipping bolts for transportation if completely necessary. 
So we've packed all your stuff and I hope this really helped you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thank you so much. While unloading, you have to make sure to unload and stack all the boxes properly. The first thing we do is protect the property by putting down floor runners, covering railings and doors, and putting down floorboard if you're moving heavy appliances. Packing paper is a professional mover secret weapon. Sold in 10 and 25 pound packages, packing paper, unprinted newsprint, is the most economical and versatile material for protecting nearly everything you're moving. Use it for wrapping fragile items and crumple it up for padding. And unlike bubble wrap, it can be recycled. Many moving supply companies sell specialized packing accessories such as little foam bags and cardboard cell kits to protect glassware and other fragile items but almost everything can be packed with simple packing paper. Box cutters will help make unpacking a breeze. Get thick permanent markers to mark your boxes for easy identification. Label boxes on the sides, not the tops, which may be covered by other boxes. Mattress bags and furniture pads. If you've hired a full service moving company, it will supply everything needed to protect your furniture as part of your total move cost. If you're moving yourself, your back will thank you for using wheels to move heavy loads. Dollies and handcarts can be rented for about a day whenever you get the truck or tempo. You can also buy furniture slides there. These go beneath the feet of heavy items such as a couch, allowing you to easily slide them across the floor without damaging it. I hope you were able to solve that problem out. Yes. Also, while you were away, I got a call from this young guy who wanted to know how to store large amounts of data, mainly movies, through wireless methods. Movies? Well, I'm quite a movie fan myself. Luckily, I know some tricks that could sort out this problem. Data is everywhere. And sometimes the built-in hard drive of your laptop or desktop doesn't have sufficient space to store it. External hard drives, while being a great way to store your data, can be cumbersome to carry around when you need to access it on the go. There are several other methods of storing data. One such method is to do so wirelessly. For this, you'll need a network hard disk and a compatible wireless router for the same. The wireless router can be configured for a wireless network to which you can connect the network hard disk using a cable. And once you connect your laptop to a router wirelessly, you can access content stored in the network hard disk. Another sleek way to store data and access it on the go is to store it online using Dropbox or iCloud. Most Dropbox accounts have an upper limit for the amount of data you can store. But obviously the speed will be a lot slower as compared to a network storage device. In this episode, we've compiled a list of very interesting accessories for your laptop. Whether you're working from home or office, our list of must-have accessories for your laptop are what you need to make your laptop easier, faster and better to use. A laptop bag or backpack may be the most common accessory when it comes to laptops and has its uses right in places. With enough pockets to store your battery and miscellaneous things like notepads, pens, and inner padding to protect it from damage. A laptop cooling pad is a perfect accessory to keep your laptop from heating up and to save your lap from damage. Privacy screens are a must have if you frequently use your laptop while commuting or if you're always using it when you're traveling. There may be times when you're accessing sensitive information. In these instances, the screen or filter means that only the person sitting in front of the laptop can see the information on the screen. Keeping in line with security, a cable lock for your laptop is a necessity, especially if you're traveling with it. A theft deterrent is great of not only preventing your laptop from being stolen, but also from any valuable data from being stolen from it. Wireless speakers is also a great accessory to go with your laptop. Great for parties or when watching a film. 
wireless speakers can easily be connected to your laptop and allows you to seamlessly enjoy media with far better sound in contrast with the inbuilt speakers. In this segment, we take you through how to transfer data from your tablet to your computer wirelessly, making the entire process much easier. The first method is the cloud method, probably the most reliable and easiest. Android devices can connect to nearly every known storage solution and do a great job of syncing your tablet with your PC. You'll need to have a cloud software installed on the PC and tablet. You have to selectively download the file to the device, work on the file, save the file and then allow the cloud service to resync the newly edited file. You can also install and use FireDrop that works with Windows, OS X and Android devices. The one minor drawback here is that you'll need to allow access on public networks, which means anyone using FileDrop, including through the website, can try to send files to your computer. You can easily decline anything coming from unknown sources. Coming up next on this episode, in the Easy Hack segment, learn how to record your iPhone screen activity as a video on a MacBook. In the Before You Buy segment, know what to consider before buying an inverter. In the Tips and Tricks segment, learn how to carry out maintenance on a split air conditioner. We seem to be using our iPhones more and more for video recording activity these days. Which is why, in this segment, we teach you how to record your iPhone screen activity as a video on your MacBook. The method explained in the following steps to record your iPhone screen activity as a video on a MacBook. Connect the iOS device for your Mac using the data cable. Open the applications folder. Double-click on QuickTime Player, click on the File menu, select New Movie Recording, click on the downward facing arrow to the right of the record button. Under Camera, select the name of your iOS device. If you wish to record audio from the device, select its name in the Audio Source list. Click on the red Record button to begin recording video from your phone. When you're done, click on the button again to stop recording. With power cuts becoming a very frequent and more annoying part of our daily lives, know what to consider before you buy an inverter to get the most out of your investment in this segment. Calculate the power consumed by all electrical devices placed in your room. Calculate the total power needed and make provision for an additional 10% to your final figure. If required, use separate wirings for the inverter and use separate MCB for inverter wiring. The inverters and battery pack must be installed in a well-ventilated area. If the price really matters to you, just choose branded inverters with lower capacity. Never go for lower-end, non-branded, local-made inverters. These inverters may spoil your valuable electronic devices connected to it. Only buy batteries with quality certification. Buying battery and inverter from the same brand is advisable. Tubular batteries always have one or more years extra life when compared to flat plate and semi-tubular batteries. Today, we'll teach you how to do some self-maintenance of your split air conditioner to increase its service life. Air conditioning controls the temperature and humidity in a building, most commonly in warm conditions. 
But to fully understand how to maintain your unit, you first need to be aware of how air conditioning works. Air conditioners have many more components than furnaces, boilers and other temperature controlling systems. So there is a bit more that goes into making them work. Open the front grill cover and remove air filter and clean every 15 days. Remove battery cover of the remote and check the condition of the battery once in every 6 months. Keep the air filters clean. A new home may require more frequent filter attention once the unpacking is done. Replace glass fibre filter when dirty. Clean semi-permanent plastic impregnated finer filters by vacuum cleaning or washing them with detergent and water. Air drying thoroughly and reinstalling. If your air conditioning system doesn't have the appropriate levels of refrigerant, little or no cooling will take place. If your coolant lines need replacing, you'll need to examine the lines running from the condenser to check if the insulation has been damaged or worn. If you find that some wear and tear has occurred, it is likely that your system won't be as efficient at cooling and will need to be replaced. You can maintain the condenser in the following steps. Step 1. Analyze the environment surrounding the area of your condenser unit. If you see overgrown grass, weeds or anything else that could be obstructing airflow, it is paramount that you cut them down to ensure that your condenser unit performs to its optimum. Step 2. Buy a can of commercial coil cleaner from any cleaning store or website and use it to clean the condenser. Read the instructions on the side of the can carefully as it will tell you how much to use and where to apply. Step 3. The fins within the condenser unit will need to be cleaned with a soft brush. Just remember to be gentle as this is a very delicate part of the system and they are prone to breaking if aggressive cleaning methods are used. Depending on your unit, you may have to remove the protective grill to gain access to the fins. So be sure to determine the best way to remove this without causing damage.